beauty emerges from pleasure. It's linked with self-preservation via sexuality. Beauty is light, delicate, smoothly curving, relatively small, cute, sweet, fragrant, sonorous, graceful, elegant, symmetrical, soft, lush in color, with gradual variation and refinement. You know, Downton Abbey, Bridgerton vibes. Not, not so the sublime. Unlike beauty born from pleasure, the sensation of the sublime was born from the tensing of our nerves within our bodies, our eyes clenched, our imaginations crushed under some horrible immensity. The sublime was born from pain. For Burke, the passion associated with the sublime emerges from our contact with the overwhelming power of nature in pure astonishment with some degree of horror, as he has it. In the sensation of the sublime, our mind is so overawed that only the sublime fills our mind. It throttles our reason. It drives us as a taskmaster. It robs us of conscious thought and activity. Burke then continues a blow-by-blow proto-phenomenological analysis of the characteristics of the sublime, creating a veritable checklist of the fundamental ingredients in the creation of the lighter Gothic aesthetic. And as such, here is a rare case where philosophy at some level truly does inform art. The Gothic at some level is the Burkean sublime willfully distilled into literature, art, music and film, and thus the sublime is founded upon natural terror, uncontrolled fear born from the tremendous power which inspires just that passion, the vastness of a mountain, the blackness of a night, the titanic swelling of a sea in tumult, a storm relentlessly bearing down with hail and rain and lightning, and yet this horrible magnitude is also met with terrible obscurity. The sublime is just beyond our full ability to grasp it. It hides in the dark and in the shadows and the gloomy pomp of the Miltonian hell, the inner darkness of forgotten temples or caverns deep within the earth. Thus, the sublime has its mirth in darkness, gloom, confusion, mania, and obscurity. Despite that obscurity, the sublime is terrible in its power and threatens to annihilate not only us and our consciousness, but, but life itself. It's the horrible power of unpredictable vengeance from the gods, the tremendous violence of the divine, as Job is chastised toward the end of that book. Power with nothing of reason, nothing of care, no mercy, and no restraint. And yet the sublime can also be sensed in the vastness of privation, of emptiness, of vacuity, and of silence, solitary, vast nothingness. It is that vastness, especially the vastness of infinity, the vastness perhaps of eternal cosmic gulf, the streaming eternities of space and time in which all human proportion becomes meaningless, laughable even, you getting those Lovecraft vibes yet? Barring such infinities, vast structures, including human structures, can also inspire the sublime.